give to him while he's in prison. And so we move on to verses 14 through 16 where he says, it's good of you to share in my, in my troubles. And as we saw in verses 10 through 13 and they're renewing their concern in him, he's also saying, yeah, it's good that you are with me to share in my affliction and in my troubles. Um, um, but if we continue, there's a lot of there's a lot of statements in here that connect what he's saying, and he has long sentences. And really, what he's saying is, um, thank you for being partners in my affliction. Thank you for renewing your concern for me. And he wants them to know that he, um, he's saying that. Starting over, <laughs> um, he wants to be. Um, he wants to let them know that he's thankful that they are giving to him and they are being faithful in his affliction. And verse 15 and 16 goes on to say, moreover, um, which the word moreover denotes that there is, um, he's adding to the previous statement. Um, As you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Now Paul is really talking about their friendship. Um, as we learned last week, they have a Greco kind of Roman relationship, and this is this is how their friendship kind of works. The, he gives and they receive, and it's a very reciprocal give and take kind of friendship. So when they give to him, he would give back to them whatever it is that he has, and that's kind of been their friendship. And he's saying, you guys were the only church that was faithful and giving, and I was able to give back to you. Um, and they did this consistently, faithfully. Um, so we're going we're gonna to step back a little bit and evaluate what Paul's saying. Um, Paul is in jail for preaching the gospel. He's thanking the Philippians for their faithfulness in supplying him with gifts while he's in jail. Um, now, a couple weeks ago, we also learned about what jail would be like um, in Paul's time. And, and basically, you, you, know, you don't get fed unless you have family or friends around you um, that can give food to you. Or, you know, if you rip your jeans while you're in, in jail and you need another pair, you don't get another pair unless you have friends or family that can s supply those to you. And um, the Philippians are supporting his cause and his life as he has no other means, um, which he states in verse 15. And it's important to note that the Philippians are not only supporting him during his hard time, but the Philippians are going through a time of struggle as um, mentioned earlier in the book of Philippians. Now, a real life example of this is, uh, comes from a man named Lao Zhenying, and he's, um, he lives in China around the 1950s, and he was a Chinese missionary. And basically his story is, is that he became a, a Christian at a very young age. Um, he had crazy, crazy miracle things happen to him, and he knew that he wanted to preach the gospel to his people in China. And that's not really allowed if you understand the culture and the context of the Chinese um, government. It's, it's kind of communistic, and they want a universal um, understanding of their religion. So the religion that is acceptable in China is the universal church. And that's not necessarily supporting biblical teachings. So there's a lot of house churches and underground biblical things happening. And, and we're going to call him Brother Yun because that's what he changes his name to. Brother Yun is part of this, this movement to, to teach underground churches, and he gets thrown in jail. And he tells a story about his jail experience, and basically they wanted him to give information about who else was he preaching with, and he wouldn't speak, and so they beat his legs, and they, they beat them so bad that they were completely broken. He talks about them being black and blue, and he could not walk on them at all. And he had Christian believers in the, the jail with him, and they had to carry him if he needed to use the restroom, and they had to bring him his food. And if he needed something, or if he needed, you know, they had an hour of out time, time outdoor time. Um, if he needed to go outside, like, they had to carry him and, and sit in there. And they were responsible for his every need while he was in jail. And even then, in jail, he talks about them receiving just a bowl of watery soup once a day, and maybe a roll of bread maybe once a week. And he talks about how the Christians in the jail supported him and were faithful to what he needed. And he had family and friends outside that brought him clothes and, and blankets to keep him warm over the winter. And he talks about there were people in jail with him that died because they didn't have people to bring them food and they didn't have people to bring them blankets. And so this is kind of what Paul is talking about. It's a, a real thing that happens. He needs the people around him to 
um, to be there for him. And so why is it important that we remain faithful to one another during pressure? Well, through the text we learn that it promotes our friendship. And in the text, Paul is talking about how they give and we receive, and, and there's that relationship. Well, let's say there's always just a giving and a giving and a giving. Like in any relationship, there needs to be give and take. And so when we help other people out when they're in need, they can remember like to help us out when we're in need. And that fosters that relationship. You're constantly talking, you're constantly helping each other. And it, it is birthed something deep, and it, it helps the friendship. And we also learn that when we remain faithful to one another, it promotes the spread of the gospel. Paul's mantra to his life was, to live is Christ. And so when the Philippian church is all about Paul, they're all about Paul's statement and his vision for his life. And so not only is the Philippian church about Paul, but they're about spreading the gospel. So he receives everything that he needs time and time again from the Philippians. And when he gets put into positions of affliction, like in this, in this letter, he's in jail, um, for the work of the gospel, that's what a present day missionary does. And to just bring this back to our time, um, there are those of us in the church um, that stay in the church. We have a very, very, very narrow mindset of our world. And there are people that give up their life and their culture and their comforts of this world and this culture and this country that we live in to go and be uncomfortable and learn a new language and a new worldview and a new idea. And they have to practice the culture of a different culture that they've never even lived and they have to understand something else and they have to die to themselves daily to go and preach the gospel to a different culture. And so when we are faithful and we support these missionaries in our churches, it, it supports the spread of the gospel, and that's, Paul is thanking them, like, thank you for being, you know, one with me in my affliction, thank you for being one with me in my gospel, and, and thank you for helping me support this. And so when we are faithful to one another in our body and in our church, it helps promote the spread of the gospel. Now going back to the text in Philippians, um, Paul states in verse 17, um, not that I'm looking for a gift, but I'm looking for that which may be credited to your account. I have received full payment, and even more, I am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So, this is what Paul is trying to say. My grandma and my aunt, at the beginning of the year, decided to make me their ministry. And, oh, sorry, I can't see me. <laughs> um, so they, they decided that they were going to send me boxes, bigger and as big as this, and sometimes two boxes at a time, to support me and my life. And so the first box came, and it had, like, baking pans and, and silicone spatulas and things that I don't think that I need when I start my own life. And, and they just they sent me all this stuff and, and cookbooks and, and money and and then they sent me food and soup and cans and, and it was cool the first you know month and then after the first month another box came with more food and more stuff and socks and clothes and Jackie what do you need what do you need and I don't need anymore <laughs> like I have everything okay well we're gonna send you more because we know that you have a stomach and we know you like to eat and so <laughs> okay all right and so they're sending me boxes like this monthly. And they've been doing this since January because I am their ministry. And they have sent me so much that the food took over one shelf in my apartment, and then it took over a second shelf, and then it took over the top shelf, and then I have an overflow stash over here. And then I have like this cup, this Tupperware covered thing in my closet to like hold all the extra spatulas that we don't need. And it got to the point to where everyone that came to our house, I was like, are you hungry? Let me cook you something, because I have so much food. And then when people were like, Jackie, you're weird. Stop trying to feed me. I, was, I tried to feed my roommates. And they're like, Jackie, we don't eat that much food. <laughs> then I started giving it away. And I was like, you guys, I need to get this. This isn't a nice thing. I'm not being selfless. I need it out of my house. Take it, please. 